come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show and review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that. By going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded individuals like yourself who are into the same kind of stuff that we are. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. What is good? <laughs> <laughs> what is good tonight? To uh, uh, somebody, somebody already wrote it in, so I don't want to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save it for the end for me. All right. What do we watch tonight? How about that? Uh, we watched uh, Conan the Barbarian. Conan? Conan. 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 Co- Conan. Conan sounds more <laughs> fantasy, if that makes sense. It does. Conan. Like yeah. He-Man. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Conan. Conan. Yeah. yeah, if I if I say Conan the Barbarian, it's Conan the Barbarian. Conan yeah, the not Barbarian. Conan man. the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conan. No, no, no. Indeed. Yeah. Starring. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean just wants to S- flex. C H. Uh, yeah. Okay. S C H W A R Z E N N E G E R. Nope. No. 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 no, 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 no. There's not two N's. There's two G's. Two N's. Yep. Did I say N N? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I meant G. And you, you didn't say two G's. You only said one. So. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. You don't have that superpower. Damn. <laughs> but when writing it down. Oh well. Yeah. yeah it's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. This was made in 1982. Um, by John Milius. Who's John Milius? Uh, he was the um, writer of uh, Dirty Harry and Magnum Force. Mm-hmm. He also wrote uh, Apocalypse Now. Okay. Um, he apparently did uh, a lot of the rewriting on Jaws, which was uncredited. He really? also wrote the shooting draft, I think, of The Hunt for Red October, uncredited. Interesting. Um, and directed Red Dawn. Red Dawn, yeah. Which would be like uh, the other big movie that i know him from (laughs) (laughs) which also starred william smith who plays conan's dad in this movie uh as uh, the russian soldier Mm -hmm. there you go a russian commander so there you go who else wrote this movie colin oliver stone Stone. that one surprised me when that came up yeah oliver stone how did he get involved do we know how he got involved like he just got a thing for he was robert e howard um No, actually, the um, it was a producer, uh, Ed Pressman, uh, went to Oliver Stone with the project. Uh, they had seen um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Pumping Iron. Has anybody seen this movie? No. Yes. Not for a while. Long time you ago. Saw it, but yes. Yeah. Yes. It's not as interesting as you would think. It's, but he's it's, like, I, a yeah, I didn't really. It's just a, it's it. a uh, what you call it. Uh, it's a bodybuilding. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a, a vanity documentary. Thing. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. just like look how strong I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's a lot of that throughout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was like 1975. Uh, Ed Pressman went to Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone um, wrote apparently this like gigantic crazy script on a cocaine bender. Ooh. That's about right. And they Love said, <laughs> that, and this is by his own admittance. Like he's like, um, I don't know if he actually said that or book know, was this in. Cause I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go look that back up again, but he, uh, they went around for several years trying to get the movie made. Um, and couldn't I think Ridley Scott was going to direct it at one point? They were talking right. to Ridley Scott. Uh, is that what our ode to uh, blue sex scenes? Like I know it's Tony Scott and everything, but like, yeah, in the I, Scott family, yeah, there is a blue blue lit sex scene yes, in this movie. Is. Yeah, um, but then they sold it to uh, Dino De Laurentiis, and uh, Dino, Dino De Laurentiis hired John Milius, and then that's uh, you know, so then they actually made the movie. They they were inspired, I guess, by um, the Savage Sword of Conan comic books. Mm which were big in the seventies. And so was like dungeons and dragons and all the stuff that kind of, but I think it was the success of star Wars as like a big, uh, fantasy movie that kind of allowed this kind of know, felt like it. I got that yeah. feeling of that big epicness that star mm-hmm. Wars gives you. Yeah, for sure. Not the, yeah, yeah I, th- I think a lot of people don't necessarily link them because, you know, sci-fi and fantasy do have different, hearts but there is a this, very similar score, feel there's a very the, similar feel. i think the score got the me score there. The, the score is yeah. great in this movie as yeah as I'm that's concerned. basil polidorius mm-hmm. very um, good i will say if this movie didn't have that score it would be a chore to sit through 
that score carries this movie a lot of the way. Well, there's a lot of scenes in this movie that are like that don't even have any dialogue. No, right, right. Like, exactly. Long, so long you are stretches. counting on the score. Yeah, yeah. long yeah. stretches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I think he was trying to go for Milius was going for like a. Uh, Wagnerian opera, mm. you know? Oh, got but, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Vikings and Valkyries and all that stuff. Uh, you know, but yeah, this is like, I think this is one of the greatest movie scores that like I've ever heard. Uh, and it does a lot of heavy lifting. I think, it does. The, it yeah, really does. He did uh, Robocop also. Uh, 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 a classic. Yeah, because there was a couple s- moments in there. I'm like, I hear a little bit of Robocop <laughs> in our, uh, the foreshadowing for Robocop. But yeah. Um, um, yeah, when was the last time? Because I guess the reason I brought the movie was because a couple weeks ago I know we're I was gonna say, this dipping. is your yeah this <laughs> is your uh, your retort to the Beastmaster and that was a couple weeks ago because well, I was surprised on that show when at the end of the, we were talking about it and Conan the Barbarian didn't really come up and I'm like so you know had you guys had you all seen it before yeah but it's been like a decade it's, and it's like been a long time. it's not something I revisit all the time it's like it's I've seen it I. I accepted it. I took it in and uh, then I went about my life, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. And, and also just, I don't know, growing up, I watched both Beastmaster and Conan the Barbarian. Again, it's been a long time yeah. since I saw it. But in my mind, like, Beastmaster is just so silly. Mm-hmm. And this is totally the opposite like, of silly. Ser- yeah. 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 So yeah. in my yeah. mind, like, I didn't necessarily put them side by side because of that. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. I think the Beastmaster catches kids more than Conan does. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, I, definitely. And well, I think that's where it comes from. Well, this is like a hard R rating, too. Well, yeah. Like, For sure. Yeah. You know, whereas Beastmaster is like, it's silly because it's so, like, neutered in its yeah. approach, yeah. you know? Yes. And he's got animals, is uh, right, and that's the, right. well, that's yeah. the big thing. Like, it's like this, we have gratuitous. Sex, I mean, look, and we, that, we have ferrets. Like, yeah. There's a big difference, right? A softness to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think. Well, I guess I was thinking. You know, it's like uh, when we were talking about it. For some stupid reason, I uh, have gotten this it's thing not where stupid, Colin, don't do no, that it, it is because I mean, <laughs> when you start deep diving into like the sword and sorcery genre, mm-hmm. you know, for reasons that are basically like I like one of them. <laughs> you know, but there's all these other ones that come out. Well, yeah. It's like there's clearly like some uh, you know, like uh, appeal here that they were cranking out copies of Conan the Barbarian like Beastmaster mm-hmm. and all this stuff and it's like what the hell is the uh, you know, the 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 sword and sorcery genre. What is the pull? What is what yeah. Kind of brings you in. Yeah. And I was just wondering where it came from and all that. And it turns out it comes from Conan the Barbarian because we're thinking like, well, you know, it's got to be the Hobbits or something or Lord of the Rings. But Conan predates them. Yeah. He came no. out in the 20s. Conan the books predates Lord of the Rings books? Yeah. The stories do, right? When did they yeah. come out? He 20s? Created, it was, no, it was the, the 32. 32. The 1932 is um, Conan the Barbarian. And I think believe the Hobbits were like either I'm 47 look, I'm seven or something that. like that. Or The Hobbit, and then The Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. uh, stories. So it turns out, in my research, I find out that sword and sorcery is a term that was used to describe the fiction of Robert E. Howard, and right. specifically these. Mm-hmm. Because wasn't there a journalist who's like, how do we describe these these things that are made from him? And they came up with it in a letter to some other person yeah. he was talking to. Yeah, okay. a couple right, of right, right. Yeah. yeah, Talking to each other about the stories that Robert E. Howard did, and they had to find a way to uh, describe it. Yeah, how do you describe this weird... <laughs> type of fiction that he's doing which is taking like historical fiction and horror and magic and swashbuckling and Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know and sword play and all that and i think they were saying that the big difference between like um you know high fantasy you know of J.R.R. tolkien Mm -hmm. and like the robert e howard stuff is the the scale is smaller and more personal (laughs) yes you know where it's not like, you know, someone's trying to take over the world. Right, there will right, not be right. a battle of five armies yeah, in, a, in Conan. Yeah, it's just this one weird snake cult. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of well, the many okay, weird snake cults. Okay, but to be cults. fair, in this movie, they, this snake cult keeps going around and, like, taking over cities. It's true. So, and, re- and erecting, like, pyres very and pillars and mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, very did true. I, I don't know if I misheard, but I got the impression toward the end that uh, Thelsa Doom, our uh, main antagonist, was basically telling his followers to go out and, like, you're going to go and, like, Burn down the, mm-hmm. uh, you know. So yeah. it is kind of a doomsday uh, cult that he's got going on there. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, Thulsa Doom is played by James Earl Jones in this movie. And with great hair. Yeah. 
It, I, I, I'll <laughs> say the props in this movie look amazing except the wigs. Yeah. Everything looks, and they stand out so much more because everything else looks so good. Mm-hmm. And then the wigs, ugh, and everybody, they're bad. Except for yeah. his, who's his, uh, Thulsa Doom's um, right hand man. He's got two. The, he's the, got... the Lemmy, you know, the guy with the oh, mustache yeah, yeah, and yeah. hair. That's real hair. Like, that's yeah, him. Yeah, like, yeah. Because that, I still see dudes with that. Why well, should the today. other dude do It's so still bad. Got, no, no, it's not good. Big, like, bodybuilder dudes. Well, one was a bodybuilder who was right. a friend of uh, Schwarzenegger. The other one was uh, Ben Davidson, right? He yeah. was the uh, Oakland Raiders guy. But yeah, right. they have that 80s. Is it feathered hair? Yeah. You know, the mm-hmm. yeah. rock star. With hair. bangs. Hair, they yeah. all have bangs. Bad bangs. Bad bangs. Very bad. Yeah. Colin, did you ever rock that look? Uh, you ever I, have bangs? I tried. No, I don't think I ever had the okay. bangs. I got to dig up some pictures. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen some old ones with you in a leather jacket and some longer hair in the back. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably, yeah. I was an idiot. <laughs> I rocked the mullet when I should have been rocking that. That was when I had, you know, more hair. It was glorious. <laughs> That's when we all had more hair. <laughs> glorious days, yeah. Um, okay, so Conan the Barbarian is the uh, tale of... Uh, well, so this is like a biopic, right? Or biopic? How do you say that? Biopic? biopic. A biopic of this character uh, from like his childhood all the way through to like, um, mm-hmm. with a, even with a short epilogue at the end that says future tales will be told. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he which, will be king, which we're day. still waiting for. Uh, cause, well, what was the? I mean, there was a sequel, right? Yeah, it was the, the, the Destroyer, right? The Destroyer, right? Yeah. So the Conqueror would be the third one where he's mm-hmm. king. Uh, it turns out they okay. So here's some trivia for you. They did actually write a uh, script for Conan the Conqueror. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but since uh, Schwarzenegger and, and those guys didn't ever do it, it was reworked in the 90s into a movie called Call the Conqueror, starring oh. Kevin Sorbo. That <laughs> oh, sounds no. terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus. I was actually oh, no. thinking, you know. That guy's insane now. Is he? Well, I mean, he's probably he's always insane. been insane. He's well, okay, he's publicly up. insane. Now. Right, yes. This is uh, Hercules, the yeah, legendary journeys. Yeah. Well, at some point, the, uh, the, because Call the Conqueror came out like in the 90s when sci- when fantasy was like Dragonheart and stuff like that, uh, that they were oh, doing, right? Dragon oh, Dragonheart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantasy's been around forever. That was the other thing that <laughs> right. I found out. They're still making them. Well, actually, I could say that maybe the last thing that they did I mean, after Game of, before Game of Thrones or during Game of Thrones was like uh, Conan the Barbarian the with remake. Jason. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, it was oh. bad. <laughs> yeah, I wanted. I really wanted to like it, and it just it just kept disappointing me. Oh, dude, like, is, when it, I is saw, it follow? Well, like, wait, no. This? That was the no. same year as Immortals, which was see the, yeah. that that like 2009 to 2011. It was like okay, 3D is hot right now, so let's do fantasy movies yeah, and 3D. 3D. Yeah. Yeah. So Clash, like, of Clash of the Titans Clash of the Titans, Immortals, yeah. and then oh, Wrath of the Titans. And I suppose <laughs> 300 <laughs> might have some you know, play for the reason why yeah. those were created. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, Jason Moore is a good choice, though. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a great ca- casting, casting choice. I w- perfect. I wouldn't go with... Ron Perlman's in it too, yeah, and Stephen yeah. Lang is in it, yeah. and Rose Fantastic. McGowan. Is yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's it's real bad. I remember seeing like photos from the you know when they were making that movie, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I think you got your perfect Conan because yeah, yeah. he yeah. looks sure. like a Frank Frazetta. He does, painting. especially because yeah. he doesn't have a beard in that movie. I don't right. know if any like if, so, yeah. if listeners, yeah. if you're not familiar what he looks like without a beard, like. Yeah, he, does, he looks like a different person without a beard. There was a, a sequel to this movie, uh, Conan the Destroyer, which came in, in 84. And then there was a uh, there was a cartoon. Because, I mean, they all got to have a cartoon. cartoon. That was called Conan the Adventurer. Uh, then there was a TV show. Less blood and boobs, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. Because I mean, you're appealing okay. to the audience. Right. I think the second one was PG, right? So they were like, okay, the, the primary audience for this is teenage boys, and they can't go see Conan the Barbarian because right. it's rated R. So we'll yeah. give them the, the But PG the reason one. teenage boys want to see it is because, because of the rated exactly. R version. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yes, <laughs> uh, I've always maintained this. Yeah. And Hollywood yeah. doesn't ever listen to me. No. <laughs> also, uh, the ratings are not a law, people. It's not a law. It's a suggestion. You don't have to follow it. Um, but anyway, there was, so uh, John Milius and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger were working on King Conan, Cross of Iron. I think oh. it was called. Oh, Milius had been working not, not on a this circle, Not a circle of iron, huh? Not a circle of iron. Thank Damn. God. And uh, I could be wrong. Maybe No, okay. So, and then it became the legend of Conan and all this stuff. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger went and got elected governor of California, and it kind of shit the whole... Wait, uh, they were going to do the third one that recently? 
prior to him becoming. Yeah, but him being governor was within the past like 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's King Coney. He was supposed to be like, you know, yeah, 60, but that's way old. late to do a third one, is what I'm I saying. Know, but that's now's the time way to bring later. Back all these, it's decades know. later. And then, yeah, because that's why I'm like, you know, now that they made a remake, is mm-hmm. your brand off? Like, people think it's got Jason Momoa in it or it's a reboot? I don't think or... anyone remembers no, that movie. No, I was just saying, you could probably keep going and no one's going to remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're still doing Indiana Jones movies. You can bring back... Uh... Against okay, Better okay. Judgment. Yes, they, they should, are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Milius had a stroke uh, at some point. He's still alive and apparently lost the ability to talk for a while. Uh, I don't know Yikes. if he still has, but... Um, there's a documentary on him and all this stuff, but it yeah. was kind of sad. Um, but um, yeah, Schwarzenegger's still talking about it like it still could happen. And I'm like, how old are you now? No, like, you know, no, I mean, don't do it, Arnie. <laughs> like, we can't. No, unless it's, to like, de-age you yeah, unless and, it's like Son of Conan or something like that. But like, I don't want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't either. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, that's what would unless make sense. Unless there's like that great scene yeah. at the end where he is the old king, but he gets it together for one last great battle. Yeah, well, it's got to be about him. I guess that's the thing. Like, you know, when you go yeah. see these new Star Wars movies, yeah. and you know that Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford are in it, you want it to be about them, you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> not like right. we're handing it off to a new yeah, generation. The, oh. We don't that's, like. I don't want to hear that anymore. <laughs> I'm so tired of the handing. We off don't to like handoffs. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> we're doing I don't it. like it. I don't like hearing about it. Ugh. So the the movie starts off with uh, the raid of a village um always know. always a siege well yeah. there's also this thing that's set up in the movie just like in beastmaster that, yeah <laughs> just like in beastmaster <laughs> okay i wonder so where that got i think we said in the beastmaster We're needling episode Colin right now that uh both of those movies were basically in production at the same time and yep. so they couldn't have stolen from each other mm. except of course the conan stories had existed since the 30s um, oh, did we mention, I said we mentioned Frank Frazetta as uh, Momoa looked like him. Right. But Frazetta right. is also like a key figure in the development of Conan because he did all these covers for the books in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And that's when, you know, the books became very popular. Okay. Um, and then the, the Savage Sword of Conan comic books and then, you know, Dungeons and Dragons and then Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings right. uh, became like a big thing on college campuses. Like number one bestseller, like in the in the late 60s, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. And so then he had Dungeons and Dragons and then fantasy Star Wars and then the um, 80s cycle of sword and sorcery movies, of which Conan was mm-hmm. one of them. Uh, so is his, this our peak? I think so. I think so. Because like looking it up, there was uh, from 1980, 80, mm-hmm. right? He had Clash of the Titans. Are we on a narrow window like the Slashers? Yeah. It's yeah. 80 to about 85. Because in 85, okay. you've got... That's when... No, actually, I'd say 87 because Masters of the Universe. Oh, 88 yeah. is Willow. Mm-hmm. But those are like the only uh, movies uh, you know, out that year where if you look at like 82, 83... Or 81, 82, 83, there's like a ton of uh, sword and sorcery. Is this where the Hercules and all that shit came? 83. Mm -hmm. There you go. And I mean, come on, they're trying to cast uh, Schwarzenegger's, you know, the the co star of Pumping Iron. Right. The one that he got in his head, now he's in this movie. (laughs) Yeah. Just like it. Ooh. We did an episode on Hercules. You should go back and listen to (laughs) Did we do Hercules or Hercules? No, we didn't do Hercules in New York. No, no, we, we did Hercules. No, no, yeah, the no we did the Lou Ferrigno right. Hercules. Yeah, the yeah, first yeah. Her- Hercules in New York is Schwarzenegger. That's Schwarzenegger, right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Okay. Wow. What well, he's played Hercules I forgot too. we did that movie. Yeah. I know. The one where wow. he punches the bear into in space. space. Yeah. Yes! Oh <laughs> and, my God, I forgot about that. I and the whole thing looked like that. a porn parody because it was so cheap. Yes. Like, mm. so cheap. Oh, From the director funny. of Star Crash. Yep. Which we also did. Ah, right. That was a Summer of Canaan episode. It was. Oh my gosh, this feels like forever ago. And there was a sequel, which we haven't covered yet. No, I haven't watched it yet, so I probably it's not okay. on my list. Right. I don't know it, if it's any it, good or not. Give it a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a siege. There's a <laughs> siege. Yes, there's a siege. <laughs> right. Uh, so there's a setup of like the riddle of steel. Is this like a big deal in the movie or not? The father's a blacksmith and he makes this sword. They and- like. I feel like they're trying to make it a big deal, but honestly, I didn't follow it at all. I I liked the story. Like I thought it was uh, a, a cool little mythology. The gods had. What they they invented steel. It was one of their secrets. One of the secrets of the gods. And um, man stole it from him, and they got into a war about it. No, the the gods lost it on the battlefield. Right, they, now yeah, man they left has it, the yes. secret of steel. And they ignored it, and they left it, and now man has the secret of yeah. steel. Yes. But I keep hearing people, like, misinterpreting that. Like, what's the riddle of steel? It's like, you know, man you can't trust, and woman you can't trust, and you can't trust steel, beasts, but you this can you can trust. And I'm like, no, that's not it. Thulsa Doom supplies the answer to the riddle of steel later on. He does. All right. But who's Thulsa Doom? Uh, Thulsa Doom is the head of the snake cult. 
who kills Conan's parents. Yes. In the opening scene. Yes, in a very um, barbaric way. Well, in a very barbaric way, but also it's 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 kind of beautiful, like the way they uh, pulled off. I think um, it's, it's effective. Very, I would say. I don't yeah, know I say beautiful. I was like, I'd beautiful say is extreme. I mean, there's a, there's yeah, a beauty to thing. it. I think, um, but it because again because of the score, because of the way it's shot, it's very slow, and there's a uh, a build up to it. This movie does take its time with its stuff, which I do appreciate. Like. Um, I don't appreciate two hours and nine minutes. It's like I appreciate it to an extent. That is a long Like there movie. is there is some specific uh, camera angles and stuff that I appreciate that they really take a moment to show what's happening. But they could have shaved a lot off of this movie. And sometimes it know? feels like things happen in slow motion. Almost yeah. they move so yeah. slow. Like it, I mean, it does. I th- uh, again, but I, when I you, it's, it's diminishing returns when you keep doing it, though. Oh, you I know what I'm it. saying? Is it? It's like. The way that I interpreted it, the pace of it, right? It's like yeah. we're going to linger and we're going to hear that, you know, soaring score. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it is kind of, and I don't know, again, audiences of the 1980s, are they more accustomed to, uh, you know, just the idea of, because um, nobody's going to the opera, right? But <laughs> the idea of like a big orchestral uh, uh, moments yes. in, in films, they're trying to slow it down and give it a gravity. Yes. I think that's what what they're doing it's like if we I slow it and linger it's like this to do. this has significant you know right. yeah, uh, yeah but not every scene has significance though but to conan yeah. it does no that's what they're trying to tell you they're trying to tell you every scene is significant and when you're telling me everyone is significant then they're all kind of the same they're not you know what i'm saying like it's you gotta save it for when it re- you really need to hit it heavy and they mm-hmm. just use it all the time yeah um so you said the wheel, he's shipped mm-hmm. off, he becomes enslaved, and they put him to work on this wheel where he forges this uh, physique. Yes, where he's, yeah, because everyone else apparently dies away as they're pushing the wheel, he ends up pushing Which it by we, himself. we never do establish what they're pushing that fucking wheel for. <laughs> no. And that drives me up the goddamn S- wall. Somewhere there's an island with Matthew Fox that just keeps like, disappearing <laughs> and reappearing and disappearing and reappearing. <laughs> like, I, it, looks, it looks like they're like... Ground, there might they might be grinding something I think they're down. Grinding I don't the bones know. of their enemy. They yeah. might be. I was maybe, like, what maybe, is happening? Maybe it is all just that. It does nothing. It's just for significance. Like when we beat you and you die, <laughs> we're gonna grind your bones under this. Well, you have what? nothing that says it's something else. So <laughs> I w- to me, it kind of felt like. I was like, oh god, is this gonna be a circle of iron thing where there's some philosophical lesson in pushing this thing like for fucking forever? Or, or, or they're yeah, just grinding something. wheat to make bread, and it's as simple and dumb as that. Like well, it could I, be anything. I have a scenario, but I'll save it for later. <laughs> but I, I think it is symbolic of of uh, you know a period in a person's life okay. <laughs> where you're walking in circles. Like uh, I get the symbolism, but yeah. why is he fucking doing it in like, the world of the movie? Why yeah. is he? doing Yeah, why I think there. I think it is because they. A slave. Yeah, I, yeah, right, but like. Your slaves are supposed to be of use. So, like, what is yeah. the what are they getting out of him doing this? Yeah, he's a slave, not a prisoner. A prisoner yeah. is something you, someone you keep like locked away for no purpose. Yeah, this yeah. is a slave. A slave is supposed to do some sort of work for you. So, what is and he's like getting you. ripped doing this manual labor? Like, why would you have? Why would you? Want, yeah, but I don't know why would you hunt someone you're keeping captive? Yeah, okay, yeah. clearly, ripped. They're, clearly they're feeding him yeah. well. Yeah. He would need a lot of protein. Yeah. To build but I didn't that know kind of if that was uh, intentional on their part or not because this. Okay, going into the weeds, just watching it, they bring like a bunch of captives yeah, originally to the wheel at the right. beginning, and then as time goes on, he's we see the he's the only one, one left. Yeah. And so I got the impression that like he was the only one who survived. Oh yeah, well, like, yeah, I got that too. That. So that's why he's pushing a wheel that should be pushed by like twelve people right. all by himself, and that's why it becomes his like. You know, big yeah, I dude. get that, but still don't understand well, why. Yeah, that. it's grain. Yeah. Still, don't they 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 enslave. They're, people if they were in a desert, there's no grain. Right. There's no farmland. That's how they're making their money. <gasps> the Whatever. Years. Right. Well, then we just go back to the grinding the bones of their enemies. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Then he becomes a pit fighter. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because you can't have a sword and sandal without a gladiator match. Right? <laughs> I think you can. Of them. Yeah. yeah, you have right. to have. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so his uh, his owner like ends up taking him to this. Uh, well, it's a pit fight mm. uh, where he learns the art of combat uh, in these violent, bloody right. things. Yeah, barbarian like, Jesus combat, Christ. yeah. <laughs> where at first he just gets bit a lot by the sharp tooth guy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And he's stabbing and poking dudes. And then uh, he gets trained uh, by uh, sword masters and he learns philosophy, philosophy which I and thought poetry. Was great. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while he's in a cage and they bring like this lady in yeah, for him. See, you know? what's the benefit in making your slave well rounded? <laughs> Like yeah, this, what, what it seems like they they're setting point? him up to have a great life without yeah. them and just like but set him free. I, like, I, I don't know. I think they're kind of, it feels like they're kind of building him up to have, like we have, we have a Conan. He will 
protect us and serve us. I don't know. Like, what is... Which, if that's what they're doing, then the movie needs to tell us that. Yeah, I you mean, know? they don't... Because yeah. yeah. if you're... If you're just keeping him around to be like your pet gladiator, like you don't want him to be smart. Yeah, you don't want him to be educated and no. well-rounded. You want I, to keep him under your yeah. thumb. That's true. I think, I think you know, yeah, you should be doing that if you want to well, keep right, this yeah. person under your thumb. But mm-hmm. I think this is his reward for winning all these matches because it's like as he progresses, it's like, well, what are you going to do with this guy? He's oh, keeping yeah. him in a cage. So he, we'll he's like Hulk in Ragnarok. You know, basically to keep him busy while we're not putting him in the, you know, it's, uh, yeah. He's like I'm Hulk reaching. and Ragnarok. He won so many fights that eventually he's just like looked upon as like a deity in whatever planet they're on. With Jeff yeah. Goldblum. Where's Jeff Goldblum in this movie? Right. Good. It's the redheaded guy with the beard <laughs> yes. who eventually sets Conan free and off on his adventures. Right. Uh, he quickly, because the first thing that you need on an adventure is uh, a sidekick. Like, right. And a sword, <laughs> a sword, and then a sidekick. Right. And then a best gal pal. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And then a wizard lady. I was kind of bummed he didn't have an animal companion. I mean, wait for the right. Sequel. Well, it's because, that like, why doesn't it, he have like a wolf or a lion? It's or, because like, we just know? watch Beastmaster, and that's what yeah. We want. yeah but like, want. but even Jonah Hex had a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it feels <laughs> like if you, especially, can you, can you imagine Arnold holding up the ferrets, going, "What the hell are you?" <laughs> yeah, and then setting because well, he could've... punches camels in this movie. He could have even like had like an eagle or something like that would eat a snake, and you got some nice symbolism there, but, but no, we'll just he, blow right past that. Right, instead, like, he bites a buzzard. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Oh, that's, that's so awesome. That's a barbarian. That's yeah, great. Because it's like, how do you... He's, he's fighting he even with his teeth. Like, you know, like, that's, <laughs> that's why he can't have a pet, because he's a barbarian. Right. Yeah. It's just like, well, if we run out of food, I'm going to have to eat yeah. my pet, and yeah. I think but he knows the, that. Like, wouldn't that be the ultimate flex to be like, I'm gigantic and ripped. I have a band of thieves and I, like even animals bend to my will. I understand that's a Beastmaster thing, yeah. but like to be the most well-rounded, like I'm a deity, like you got to have it's animals. It's true, bend but to he does will. assert his dominance by killing a pack of dogs and biting a buzzard and punching yep. a camel. Punching, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get that sidekick. They just yeah. won't join up with him. <laughs> he has dominance over the, the animal kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, What'd you think? And you know, so now you, you know. I mean, that kind of brought up the idea that there's a lot of you know that would be. I thought like you know, uh, an animal companion, not mm-hmm. a dog, obviously, but like would be some kind of magical thing. This movie and its relationship to magic. I mean, as mm-hmm. far as like you're going into a sword and sorcery movie, and I think mm-hmm. this is where the the newer. I think both Conan the Destroyer and the remake, and basically every other uh, uh, sword and sorcery movie, err on the side of. Well, we got to have magical shit happening like all mm-hmm. the time through your movie. And this one is like really underplaying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the, f- what was the first time that really the comes witch. up when he has, yeah. When mm-hmm. he, he uh, uh, what's the God's name? His God. His God is Crom. Crom. Right. Yeah. Right. When he fucks Crom, that's the, I thought when she freaks out and then leaves, like yeah. kind of like Tinkerbell has, leaving yeah, a little bit, he has but like, I thought that was really cool. It's yeah. like weird Oracle sex. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's weird Oracle sex, yeah. but it. Yeah. It's cool. Like I like how it ended. She flies off laughing. I yeah. think thro- <laughs> throws like her a forest in the fire. sprite or something. I, I, yeah. yeah, I'm starting to think <laughs> they did not educate him very well because he, like, this lady could not broadcast more that she is a witch living in right? the in the right. Nobody's I- isolation. Like, All right, you don't have to fuck everything like if, i know you're a barbarian if you see us if you culture. see a sexy lady but she's got dead shit hanging all over the outside <laughs> of her house the, keep moving yeah, right. she's in the middle of the desert and yeah. there's nobody else around yeah, yeah. she's yeah. probably a witch probably they didn't witch. teach him yeah. basic stranger danger so i no, guess he wasn't clearly. that well educated no. yeah that They're was just like well he'll figure it out <laughs> that was uh, the uh scene like when i saw this first i saw it on tv and so of course you know that's the first sex scene in the movie well no it's the second but uh, they cut the whole scene out i assumed yeah oh yeah okay so there's really no information just on sound alone yeah so i was like watching it this time going like so why is this scene in the movie and the only thing that it does is she gives him a direction on where to go to find Thulsa doom because right. otherwise how's he in gonna do it in the middle of the sex which is yeah. not yeah. the best time weird. to convey information of that import yeah. i think yeah. i've never had to give directions to a wizard in the middle of sex so i don't know i know because then you figure the sex must not be that good but we know it is because she says the price for this she's giving up information yeah, so demands it must the be price. good <laughs> you're gonna fuck me so <laughs> right but i'll tell you where to go uh i think he was actually saying like when he said crom she wasn't crom that's like jesus Ah, uh, yeah, you know. gotcha. <laughs> it's like Crom Christ. He's yeah, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I understand that. That makes more sense. Yeah. Like, uh, oh God. Oh right. Crom. Oh Crom. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He meets uh, uh, Subutai, the thief, 
they hit it off because Subutai uh, mocks his uh, allegiance to Krom <laughs> in a scene I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> it's uh, very funny. It's very yeah. funny. They're discussing gods and who they worship. It's and very like my dad's cooler than your dad. Right. Mm-hmm. Very much so. And they come to a conclusion where, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Four Sunny Bono. Sonny Bono. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he, yeah. he talks about, you know, he prays the four winds and everything, and they are above Krom. Krom is, lives underneath his gods. Yeah, and so like, my God is the look. sky. Right, the everlasting <laughs> yeah. sky. And yeah. yours lives below that. And he's like, hmm. He just like pouts. Touche. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yep, your reasoning. I say good day. Is, uh, yeah, I can't do anything about that. Yep, trapped. So um, basically, they could have cut the whole scene with the witch and just been like, he found this dude, he sets him free, and the dude happens to have information. Yeah, well, I mean, they the could only have wrapped thing that up. That it like, does and deprive us of that scene. Sure. Well, yeah, because I mean, you need your, your crazy naked witch obviously, scene in a, in a movie. Obviously. Um, Usually it's just a side quest, though. Usually it's not information for the main quest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think you're right, and the TV editors agreed with you. Uh, they uh, <laughs> end up um, wandering around and having some travels, and which takes them to uh, some kingdoms that we get to see. This is where the production design comes in because this is pre like CG. And I'm like, where in the hell are they shooting these? I was going to say, did they film parts of uh, Game of Thrones in these locations? Because they looked very Game of Thrones. I know it was Spain, Almerida, Spain, Tunisia? or something uh, like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that there's some like miniature or mat work going on there, hanging miniatures SB. or something Somewhere, like that. But yeah. man, it looks pretty good. It does yeah. look good. Yeah. It looks really looks expensive. Yeah, it really does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because I think that's the other thing, too. Of all the sword and sorcery movies that I have watched, I think that this, prior to Lord of the Rings, is probably like, well, I'm, that Dragonheart's expensive, obviously. But this one mm-hmm. looks like they spent it all on the shit they put in front of the camera right. uh, physically. You see it all on the screen, for sure. Like, I think I think it, like, as far as, like, its props and, like, the costume work and all that stuff, this is probably aged the best of any of the, like, the yeah. sword and sorcery because like what Beastmaster like we were talking about they look like dominatrixes and like yeah. you know like shit in that movie this yeah. movie there were choices looked, made yeah. in that movie yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. this it all looks very believable yeah you know natural mm-hmm. alright so we're yeah. gonna have to give a shout out to Less the guy studs. his name is Ron Cobb he also did uh, production design on Alien and stuff nice. like that but, well uh, done Ron yeah cause and he's the uh, he's the black lotus dealer at the at the market uh, the one that goes oh. in the drug that gets them all fucked up so oh. they punch the camel um <laughs> But it has, like, yeah, because, I mean, I guess we're saying, like, these things draw from, like, Viking sagas or something yeah. like that, right? But yeah. there's, like, this mix of, um, I mean, Middle Eastern, um, like, um, yeah, I don't want to say Japanese. Well, I mean, I guess Japanese influence. And then there's, like, the Mon- you know, like Genghis Khan and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. And Russians. Yes. They're you very know. much combining like Viking and Gladiator and Genghis Khan, like all the whole mm-hmm. shebang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you but can't I think, really tell. But is that what gives it like a little more like an anchor and believability versus yeah, like I think guys so. who, you know, I mean, what would you Leather have, daddies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Road Warrior, you know, <laughs> yeah, gear yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It makes more sense. Yeah, for it, sure. It just, yeah, because it looks vaguely familiar, but it's. You can't like, it's slightly it. off, yeah. yeah. So. You can't place mm-hmm. it. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. I know this. Well, and like the way they were talking about like, oh, it's this standard and stuff like that. That's like something we can identify with yeah. because like house seals and sigils and standards have like existed since forever. So Yeah. Yeah. This is how he's going to track down Thulsa Doom is because, mm-hmm. of course, the they have this, uh, it's a... <laughs> Sean's doing it now. The you got to say the, the line. snake hand gesture, yeah. <laughs> what is it saying? You know, two snakes. snakes. Two snakes. Mm-hmm. Facing each other, mm-hmm. but, but they're one. one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna... yeah. So um, they end up meeting uh, the um, Valeria. Valeria is another thief. Is that her actual name in the movie? Yeah, yeah. Valeria. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah I was some, just saying, Michaela. A lot like something George R. R. Martin yeah. wrote. There we go. And that's the <laughs> there's literally a whole region called Valeria. <laughs> Is there? In Game of Thrones, yeah. Valerian Steel. Oh, Valerian Steel, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's yeah. the high Valerian is the language yeah. they like, yeah. speak, and yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> I got your number, George. I'm, I was actually... I'm, I'm keeping these tallies on a wall in my house. Well, I mean, the guy's inspired <laughs> red, by are fantasy. Are you red-yarning that shit? Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, I am. I looked... Uh, actually, I found a list of like George R. R. Martin's ten, top ten best uh, fantasy films while looking this up. Conan the Barbarian's not on it, but Dragon Slayer is. Uh, really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, was Beastmaster be, on there? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, because he can't own, cause he can't own up to yeah. it. I think Lies. we know what's to the west of Westeros. Yeah. It's all these movies. Yeah. I have a feeling. Yeah. For sure. I think that's what's there. Yeah. So it should be just uh, her going off to the west and then ending up in these movies. Yeah. Yeah. Arya. Yeah. yeah. 
Colin, yep. if if he's so inspired by these, then he should have finished those damn books already because all the material's there already. He just got to re- rearrange it a little bit. I'm just saying in Conan the Destroyer, there might be a scene in which a, a young woman has to go into a fiery uh, place and she, of course, is uh, not burned by the fire. God in order to- damn wow. it. Uh, okay. So. Uh- what the fucking bar right now? Yeah. <laughs> Any, oh, yeah. So, um, anyway, Valeria is. Um, Played by Sandal Bergman. Mm-hmm. Uh, she like was in. Um, uh, I think they saw. She's a professional dancer. Yeah. And there's she, and, scenes and, in this where I'm like, okay, she moves like someone who knows how to be like a professional dancer. Right. Dancer yeah. and like she. I think she had exercise uh, career earlier on as well. Mm-hmm. Prior to this, I think. Oh yeah, way early on. Aerobics. Some, aerobics. That's what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Because she was in. Uh, I think they saw her in like all that jazz or chorus line. No, all that jazz. All, I chorus line on Broadway. Perfect. She is not. Really? No, that no, seems I, like I the perfect up. movie for her because she Xanadu? <laughs> no, she was typecast after this. So basically, oh. she was the bad bad guy in uh, Red Sonia. Oh, uh, she was in a movie called She, which is basically a prehistoric, huh. uh, you know. And um, was she in Quest other? for Fire? Uh, no, but she was too the temptress, <laughs> and she was also in a movie that we care, covered on this show because you'll remember, of course. Hell comes to Frogtown. Oh wow! A, yeah, uh, <laughs> that of, tracks. A couple of silk stockings episodes. <laughs> yeah, there with the series, body of influence. Yep. <laughs> but so so the thieves go and they rob a uh, a, a jewel, the eye of the serpent, from mm-hmm. uh, one of these temples, right? With and a giant snake. In the how'd body. that hold up? I'm curious. It looked pretty good. I thought. It looked pretty good. I was good. actually yeah. like when he like cut the head off. I was really curious how they did that. Actually, yeah, because they cut the head off and there's guts in it. Yeah, yeah. and it, it looks moving. solid. Yeah, and it kept moving. Yeah, like, that was pretty solid. Snake. Yeah. So like, it's there's a solid snake. Part of it's definitely being puppeteered to move, but then the part he cut must have been just like a big pillow filled with like. Well, yeah, they guts. probably had the been, yeah. the uh, mechanics going up to the cut. Yeah. Yeah. God, at least for that one they cut off. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like you got to you're hitting yeah. that spot or yeah. else yeah. we got to do But they, this whole I mean, thing. they also shot it at such a way where it's probably may have been like pre uh, like scored to come off, obviously, when he hits it with the sword. Yeah. yeah. But, but it looks heavy, squishy. Man. You can't actually, unless you're like an expert. At well, even you know. Arnie was like, he was swinging it earlier. I'm like, that thing was fucking heavy because yeah. it looks like he's having some yeah. like heft to get that thing going around. That Which was I a, like. I like that because that's how well, a sword right. should yeah. be. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, there was a thing that like in the Game of Thrones books that they never really like touched on in the show is that yeah like yeah valerian steals really light but all the other steals regular fucking steel and like they used to talk about in the first book how ripped ned stark was because he used a two-handed great sword on the mm-hmm. battlefield mm-hmm. like you gotta be fucking strong to use a sword that long yeah yeah uh i mean i guess it adds to the you know the, these uh, this is what part of the appeal of this movie to me is it feels like it takes place in like a real you know definitely kinda like uh, Peter Jackson said when he went to shoot Lord of the Rings, it's like we're gonna, it's like we're gonna take our cameras back in time to, uh, right. you know, it's right. like that's to Middle Earth. This feels like we're going back in time to the Hyborian Age. Magic exists, but it's on the fringes of uh, society. It's right. always mostly evil, except for Mako, who plays a sorcerer later on, who helps uh, them out. You know, yes, um, and becomes the chronicler of his tale. Um, Valeria and Conan are like these the a power couple uh, it's a perfect match <laughs> perfect <laughs> like he met his match it's entertaining to watch i'm into it yeah mm-hmm. yeah as they yeah. kind of bumble their way through uh, i love that they <laughs> get into shit and get fucked up together and mm-hmm. fall asleep and like he's he's not perfect mm-hmm. like i feel like beastmaster was like trying to be perfect his he's entire, jesus i mean basically you know? <laughs> but i like that that he's i mean he's a barbarian he's, he's allowed to just be like uh I'm, I'm gonna drink this i'm gonna fuck with these people i'm gonna punch camels yeah you know mm-hmm. i'm not gonna be perfect i'm gonna right. be a barbarian mm-hmm. that's actually it's interesting because uh howard had like a philosophy about like at some point he was saying like he believed that uh barbarianism right is the kind of default state of mankind and mm-hmm. therefore like eventually it's all gonna go back well i think that's why people like these movies because it reaches down to that kind of like that the base, primal, the base yeah, primal yeah. thing where you just like, uh, I fight with swords. I take the women I want and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, celebrations and all this. It's shit. do what you want. Take what you want. Yes. Yeah. Well, his, but his philosophy wasn't so much that, that they just did everything because it was more. He thought that uh, barbarians were somewhat in some ways more uh, civilized than regular uh, like civilization. 
because in civilization they could insult you politely because they don't they're not afraid that they're going to get cleaved in two. Mm. And in the barbarian, Cleft you know, in twain, Colin. <laughs> yeah, it's like. You, you don't insult somebody unless you can defend your right <laughs> you know so you're more cordial when you're a barbarian yeah exactly <laughs> okay. yeah yeah um so they end up uh teaming up uh you know and so uh then they're they're gonna go off and uh infiltrate the well no they they get recruited by a, a, a next one Cito. that guy will <laughs> pop up in the most random places yeah. it's like huh yeah didn't see that coming i know but it makes sense flash gordon was before this right yes. i think so yeah Right? 80? Yes. Yeah. So Max von Sydow, Gr- Grace is the movie with a, a cameo appearance to basically send them on their way and rescue his daughter from the cult of Thulsa Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, pardon me. And Conan ends up like wandering off on his own to go do this because uh, Valeria and, and Subutai are like, no, no, we yeah. can have money now. Like, Yeah. He, he gives them the money up front. So they're like, let's just take the money and split. Yeah. Conan just like, throws jewels no, at no. them. Mm-hmm. I, I got a score, gotta do it. I got a score to settle. Especially like in this time, like that guy has no way of following up with you. Like, I mean, maybe the best he could do is send some henchmen out to look for you, but like, mm. yeah, you, you could take the money and split and be yeah. fine. Well, I guess there's the, he gives them the promise of this is some, these are just some jewels. And mm-hmm. eventually I there's will give more, you more. Yeah. If yes. you bring my daughter back to me yeah. enough to make you all kings. Yeah. They have great, like that dialogue. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. me. I uh, mm-hmm. think that the dialogue in this movie is like great, you know, like mm-hmm. all the even throwaway lines about like, you know, after a while, the gold loses its luster. Right. All that matters. See, is but that, <laughs> When he said that, I was like, well, you just undermined your own argument then because you said you should do this. I have enough money to make you kings. And then you followed up by being like, but well, money isn't everything. But he's yeah, like, well, well, he, he doesn't, knows he it doesn't means care. what it means to them. Like yeah. at this it's point, like they're you still guys in their lives. It. Like it means something yeah. to you. Mm-hmm. Have it. Yeah. But do what I ask you. Because the only thing that means to me is my daughter. Yeah, yeah, honestly, the dialogue was better than I remember it. I th- yeah, I I agree. I think yeah. I think it's good dialogue. It, it also I think um, because the movie is so very like silent at times, like their dialogue has more punch because we don't hear them talking often. We get a lot of score. Mm-hmm. It has like the the only way that I can describe, it, and it's all Milius, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, because you know the I again watching the second one, who was which was written by the comic writers who wrote uh, the Savage Sword of Conan okay. uh, comics. Um, Milius has a writing style. You can only—it's like hard boiled, maybe. I mean, mm. it's like Frank Miller writes that way in like Sin City. You know, it's all like these big, like you know, pronouncements. And, right. You know, it's very like I don't know. When done right, they're they're cool. Yeah, and you have James cool. Earl Jones saying it. It's right, like, and you get, yeah, you get good voices doing <laughs> like you know. Uh, they kept it minimal for Arnold because I mean, obviously, but when you yeah. have James Earl Jones's voice, like you give him stuff to proclamate and to mm-hmm. say to his followers and shit. And it sounds cool. Yeah. Because uh, in the books, I mean, obviously Conan is a lot more verbose and he's like a pirate and a swashbuckler and he, you know, he goes around and does a bunch of stuff. But mm. for the movie, I think they were maybe afraid of uh audience reaction to Arnold's accent. Mm-hmm. And so they, you know, basically he does, he says like all of 15 words or <laughs> something. It feels like in this right. movie. Yeah. It's 15 words and then yeah. 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 It's yeah. the Arnold soundboard. And it really yeah, is. It is like, especially when he was falling downstairs at one point. It sounded like a family guy sketch. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, feel, yeah. I bet you could take the Arnold soundboard and make a whole movie just with the sound. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. Take the toy back to the carpet. (laughs) Speaking of toys, did you know that the He-Man toys were sued by the makers of Conan because they contracted with Mattel to make Conan the Barbarian toys, and then they canceled the uh, license. But used the mold? mold Well, they don't say that. Yeah, I don't know. Ah. Then all of a sudden, He-Man shows up, and they're like, Ah. we're suing you, but uh, Mattel won. Damn. So there you go. All, right. All comes back to Conan the Barbarian. Um so so there's so Thulsa Doom looms on this mountain and he has all these so basically he's got hippies. Wait. Mount Doom maybe? Mount Doom. <laughs> Mount, Mount Doom. Mate. Oh, oh oh. Yeah, I looked it up. Thulsa Doom's not in the Conan. He comes from Call of Atlantis, okay. but uh, they, they brought the character over. So, um anyway, he has a bunch of hippies. We get these great vistas. I mean, just from a production standpoint, you know, pre-CGI, you're right. looking at hundreds, thousands? Hundreds. 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 Easy. Easy. Several hundreds. Easy yeah. hundreds, yeah. Like, just moving very, in the background. Very grand. Like, yeah, yeah. Very grand, yes. yeah. Like, if we're not getting close-ups of these people, there's just hundreds of people back there. Yeah, like yeah. doing stuff so it has for the movie. Scale and like scopes, wa- walking you know. up a mountain, just like in a straight line. It's, right, or, it's or very even grand. the zigzag yeah. they were doing before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's got a size to it, a scope. White, yeah. White Hoods is it's not a, a great yeah. choice, but 
Well, you know, it's a great choice. If you're saying they're the, you're not supposed to trust them. They're the bad guys. I, yeah, I mean, there's other ways to convey that, you know. They, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> like Iron Crosses and shit. No. Yeah. He's, uh, well, there. he's like a, I mean, I guess at the time, well, I mean, what, 80s was still far enough removed from Charles Manson, but obviously there's a Charles Manson, you know, like, or Jim Jones. And any Jones. sort of cult thing. Yeah. Yeah. There is that. Well, sort cults of are timeless, Colin. Those yeah, are, I was gonna say, we'll, still we'll, exist and will always exist. Yeah, but they're but, specifically <laughs> looking at the hippie generation with this, right? I mean, they're all flying. They gotta be. There's hippies and, in the movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. leading the march with it's not a tambourine, but it's a tambourine. Yeah, but I think that's why it still resonates even today. Is yeah, that's, because, that's a theme that has carried on. Yeah, there's yes, there's yeah. definitely a, a, a connection between like the hippie mentality and occult life. Yeah, very like midsummer. Similar. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then we just came out. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, Conan gets uh, captured, and that's where he gets he, captured a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where he, he finds out the riddle of steel, which we're saying for all you folks at home who think that it's this you can trust. It's actually what it's the flesh. Yeah, it's stronger the flesh, because I mean the flesh is what makes the steel. Yeah, go. The, well, yeah, mm-hmm. the hand wields the sword. Yes, and he and calls then the hand like ends a, up in the soup. <laughs> yeah, and he calls like a <laughs> follower down from on high. Yeah, and she drops to her death. He's that is power. Which he's not wrong. Which is the <laughs> other thing about this. Like, if you look at what he's saying, like, he's not wrong. That is power. Mm-hmm. To just be like, yeah. come here, my child, and mm-hmm. then have them jump to their death. Mm-hmm. Like, he's... Yeah. Everything he's saying is yeah. true. He's, I know. I'm just kind of he's, he's very, he is very up up right. He's very upfront for a cult leader. They're not usually that obvious. <laughs> right, yeah. Not so transparent. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he is talking to somebody that's supposedly going to die. So maybe that's mm-hmm. why. He's oh, making, well, true. he's doing it in public. He's doing so the right. bad guy giving yeah. away his plan yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. why have a secret plan if you can't, like, you know it's so good you have to share it with people. Like, look how big of a Because that's how you undo I it. Like, I know, but you can't. Like, that's, that is their flaw. They can't help it. They have to tell yeah. you. Yeah. We they say, don't have like a group chat with their podcast friends. N- right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't have you guys, you know what I'd be doing right now? Oh my god, taking over countries. <laughs> you have no idea. I mean that's you guys, the next keep, logical you guys keep me sane. Yeah, right? We keep you grounded. We can make that jump. Yeah. You you run your plan by us and we're like, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know, John. I mean <laughs> this sounds similar to the you know, the insurrection you tried last year. Didn't work. Maybe but cool every it. year, you know, I mean right. every year it's yeah. like I've got a new the idea. Climate it's change the same idea. Again. Yeah. Uh, do we say he turns into a snake? This is okay. Also I can do. understand following a cult if you saw this shit, though. <laughs> yeah, if I saw this, I'd be like, Yeah, yeah if I saw Jesus. this happen in front of me, I'd be like, okay, okay, at the very least, he has great drugs, right? I was gonna say, yeah. that'd be like, did I, did I take something? Like, yeah. th- that would be my first thought. My first thought was like, Well, if this guy's just giving it away, then who am I to argue? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's but, always strings attached. <laughs> this one's attached to a snake. He's thousands of years old, Tulsa Doom, and he, he can turn into a snake. I love the transformation. The transformation was so great. much. Like we it's mentioned so during so the movie, funny. there was there were not enough in between from uh uh, the hands James going Jones. into the jacket killed me. Oh my god! Like a turtle god. going back. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. what I thought. Like, oh, he's slowly pulling it in. But it's yeah, it's uh, I'll, um, James Earl Jones's face, and you can see this transformation starts. The it starts to elongate. Then we cut to a woman, and then we cut back to mostly a snake at this yeah. point. Like it's just. Should have been a little bit more, but yeah. a great it's cut. not only a snake. It looks just like the Argonians in Skyrim. It looks like a puppy like snake. The lizard, why. lizard villagers in Skyrim. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, he's wearing a headdress. Like yeah, it looks yes, like it looks exactly snake man. Funny. Yeah, the lizard people in Skyrim. Um, yeah, but he ends up. Uh, well, they. This is the um, the uh, uh, Conan gets uh, crucified. You know, so he there's does. That, that religious imagery. I guess he's crucified, and then Valeria brings him back to life with the help of the wizard. Yes, and so there's, um, you know, they have to paint, uh, you know, uh, symbols on his skin in order to keep the demons from. Uh, this felt very Game of Thrones too when <laughs> Paul Drogo when they wrap him up in the thing just like that, yeah. and have to do the little ceremony on him, and then yeah. he's just comatose. <laughs> God yeah. damn it, George R. R. Martin. And there are uh, Valeria's like, got to fight like yeah, wind demons. When, yeah, well, I think they're, they're coming to take his soul. They are right because he's basically dead. We we uh, we decided these were the. Uh, we'll say the relatives of the shadow ghosts from Ghost. <laughs> yeah, because the these ancestors. ones are ripped. Right, these are the ancestors. These ones have like six packs and shit. They so they're like, like, yeah. they're like genies. They're like yeah. mini genies. They yeah. have arms and torsos and everything, yeah. but no legs. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're right. They're little bald uh, yeah. little genies. Yeah. 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 They like, look yeah. like little genies. Little red like, genies I, try and come and steal his soul. I like soul. the way they're drawn. I think they look really cool and they, they move really cool. They yeah. look cool. Yeah. They're animated. I guess that's what it's like. Yeah, it's like Disney animation or something like that. Painted on the cell frames. and Yeah, but Valeri. 
the, you know, she's told that uh, there's going to be a high price if you bring him back to life. I can do it. it but, sounds you know, familiar. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but get you a woman who will fight off wind demons mm -hmm. for you to, so your soul does not get taken. Oh, out. dude, I think that yeah. whatever she was telling tell him there, like, uh, you know, like, uh, I'll fight it. You know, if, you were, if I was dead and I'd come back, it was the most romantic thing I ever heard in my life. Right? Like, that's, that's love. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm like, love. that's love right there. That's dedication. Um, so they, uh, uh, they end up going to storm the actual Thulsa Doom uh, uh, castle where there's a big orgy taking place mm -hmm. because, I mean, that's what you do where you serve mm -hmm. uh, the guests at your orgy uh, split pea soup with the hands in it. And they're cannibals, apparently. And uh, that's where the uh, Thulsa Doom turns into a snake and it kind of escapes out awesome. the backyard or out the back door. I love when they're like, he's getting away and they cut to it and the snake is doing the slowest slither. Yep. And I'm like, well, guys, don't worry. He's not going to get far. Just look for the giant <laughs> snake. Like, It'll be fine. We'll get him. Don't worry. Yeah. I still don't know if soup is the best food to serve at orgies. Right. We also, this was the question that came yeah. up during the movie. What is the best food to serve at an orgy? Yeah. Uh, an odd question. If you have any answers, yeah. I mean, I get crackpot stuff makes cookbook. sense, right? It, it, yeah, I saw it on Facebook just yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you'd found no, it. At I didn't. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't Looking for it, orgies and other. Someone yeah. found it at an estate sale. Mm. Of, like some woman who apparently was an actress in like the sixties. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> when all the orgies happened. Yeah, yeah. It's very true. It was, it was like an orgy cookbook. Yeah, Funny. it was when you're cooking for orgies yeah. and yeah. other uh, fine another large but, party. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. which is you have my attention. I buy that book. Yeah. Yeah. Like, All right, yeah. but really that's probably got the secret because we still yeah. don't know. We're still. I mean, I get crackpot stuff is easy and like, and plus it feeds a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Which is what you, that's what you need. Well, like, I started thinking about. It, I was like, I bet if you gave all of your guests like, um, <laughs> like mugs to have the soup and so you just like need to drink it with your hand that might be practical might then, be you're not, then you're not using your hands all that yeah, much yeah that's what i was thinking you don't want finger you don't want ribs because right. that's gross getting, so actually soup well, might all right. be a good you, idea if you're <laughs> drinking it out of mugs if you either don't want ribs or you do want ribs and i don't know which orgy i want to be in like i'm just saying like for, for sanitary foods. reasons like i understand a ladle in a pot makes a lot of sure, sense yeah you know, like, let's not touch the food yeah exactly drink it and you don't have to cut anything you know so not a long sub sandwich where everybody's picking their piece off you're only using one hand you've got your other one free yeah. so mm -hmm. that makes sense free to do actually. whatever yeah. you need yeah. to do well, See, this, this is why you Save listen to the saturday yeah. night free show because you didn't think about this enough and now we're and now you're gonna be you thinking about to. it forever. yeah and, uh. like, and like you can set it and forget it with the crock pots yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah exactly. i was like if you're grilling out someone's got to man the grill and make sure yeah. that shit is ron co-sponsoring orgy yeah set because it and they, forget it i mean they had to right they were there for a set it and forget it <laughs> yeah because you have other things to do that's right that's right there it is Boom. Again, you never thought. Hmm. Never thought. We can connect until, anything yeah, to anything. Until you needed to. We can six degrees anything into mm -hmm. a conversation <laughs> on here. But I guess the type of soup is also the next question. Because that soup looks like pea soup, and yeah, that's, like yeah, that's not gross. Good. And I don't no. need protein. Yeah. yeah. You want good well, you got, food. You got hands in it, I think. Yeah, yeah the hands. Yeah. That's true. The I feel hands. Like and the you head. want like a stew. Yeah. Or chili. Ooh. Oh no, Ooh. gas, gas, no, <laughs> no, 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 the gas. I was like, no. I don't want chili at an orgy. No. I, like, I, 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 like, I was thinking for like stamina, you know, well, like sure. something hearty, but then I was like, oh no, the, eat the beans. before you go to the orgy is probably, probably the, the best, best thing. Idea. Or no, or no, no, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Because no, then eat you're going to. After the orgy. Yeah. There you go. That's you're a better be snack before bloated, the orgy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, snakes. Like snakes. Snakes. <laughs> snakes you, Ew. Yeah. Uh, snakes are used as, snakes, as arrows in this movie. I don't like it. They're, they're snake arrows. Sna they're arrows. They're jewelry. They're kind of just everywhere. Yeah, but that yeah. one, he actually yeah. turns into yeah. like a, an arrow and Which shoots cool. it into yeah. Valeria. I Seek. need... I don't know. I need. I don't know. I need. Holly some help. was not happy. I need some help from our listeners because I am very specifically remembering something from the 80s where... A snake is turned into, and this was an arrow. I feel like it was a spear in what I'm thinking of. I feel like it was the G.I. Joe cartoon movie, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. but I swear I've seen this before. A snake turned into like a spear and used as a weapon. If you know, you know. Jump right to us. Uh, we'll tell you how. If it was the G.I. Joe bit. cartoon movie, confirm that for me, because I feel like that's what it was. Yeah. Valeria gets like about yeah. uh, we have I don't more know, knowledge twelve on inches foods than we do of snake yeah. arrows. How much of that snake went into her? They're pulling it, it out for a very long out, time. He pulled it out the opposite that way though. Actress. Like he shot her in sideways through the back, and he like oh there's a little tip here, and he pulled the whole damn thing out the front of her. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. gross. And then it coiled back up. Yeah, it was awful. That yeah. poor actress had to have a little snake pouch on her. 
I mean, yeah, it's true. Yeah, you just get that pipe that goes so around. So many people in this movie are just walking around carrying snakes. Yes. Yeah, so that's true. many people. Well, because it's a snake cult. I hated it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As we know from the dialogue, there's snake cults all over, but just another snake just cult. Another just snake. one. That was my favorite line <laughs> in the movie. We, at first, we thought they were just another snake cult. And the casual way he <laughs> said that. The snake cult, yes. Mm-hmm. I love that there's competing snake cults. Yeah. I need like a warrior style, like street battle between uh, right, the like, different right, snake cults. There's yeah. just Until one too many of you. Yeah. We need to pare big... this down. All right, like, so the snake tournament is on. I like to imagine they all like have different types of snakes that they prefer. Sure. So there's someone out there that's just like a little garter snake cult. And they're like, guys, come on. You gotta pick <laughs> right, a better they're snake. Like Sweden. They're well, yeah, yeah. Right? Chilling. It's gotta be the snakes that are native to your area. Right, right. Because uh, yeah, I think there is like, like J.R. Tolkien, uh, Howard has like a map of the whole right, area of right. Hyperion. Boria or whatever. So is there like age. a mongoose cult somewhere? I wonder. They're the nemesis. Yeah. That would be my fucking cult. Yeah. Only in Hate rad, snakes. Holly. Only in rad. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, Holly. We should have had eagles or something because then they could just come down and pick them up. Yeah. And then eat them. Like that's your nemesis that's too. My you cult. know. Yeah. See, this is this is the sequel, Holly. The yeah. the eagle cult joins forces with the mongoose cult yes. and they team up to take down the snake yes, cult. Yes, I'm in. Hundred <laughs> percent. There you go. Um, so like with it. Valeria dead, Conan suffers a horrifying, huge loss that he uh, never recovers from. He doesn't shed a tear, Colin. Oh. He can't. He's he can't. a barbarian. That's right. His so friend has to cry for him. Well, not because he's yeah. a barbarian, he's a Sumerian. That's why uh, he can't shed a tear. Although how anybody knows Sumerian. this about the Sumerians who are all wiped out by the Thulsa Doom, I don't know. But Subutai knows. Uh, so Subutai cries for him. And then we go into the final battle where um, they lure all of Thalsa Doom's people because they do get the princess. Mm-hmm. They do. Yep, yep. They go in and capture her. Successful. And then there's this big, uh, whatever, two stood against uh, many. They will They will not remember. Yeah. They'll remember two stood against many. Yeah. yeah. One. I don't know. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was, was good. Speechifying also. Crom, I've never prayed to you before. I don't have the tongue for it. Yeah. And uh, if you don't help, yeah. then the hell with you. The hell with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but they win. They uh, actually do. Oh, I mean, you're surprised. They beat <laughs> the marauding <laughs> army with their booby traps and all this stuff. Even Mako gets to help out. Huh? Nobody fell on they a spike. Fall, like, they fall into, through the spikes, like, but then the nobody spikes, ever fell like on them. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a giant spike that gets mouse trapped into a person. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah but nobody That's falls true. on like the ones they set. I do oh, like yeah. that though. That was, <laughs> that that was is good. Yeah, very that was cool. Good. Just whoosh, yeah, finally gets the the, he got the a, mute. He the got a lot dude. of them just from like standing behind a rock and throwing his axe. I mean, like, that's yep, true. That's why he had. You see him like grabbing one and then positioning the other. It's like, all right, what's the that's the best way to grab this. I know, because I was like, how someone. many axes do you have? Because he's throwing a bunch of them and all this stuff. Yeah. And he still yeah. has another one to fight with. But then he ends up, it turns out, a uh, big bad guy below Thunst of Doom has uh, Conan's dad's sword. Mm. And in the fight, he actually breaks his own father's sword. Damn. Yeah. Symbolism? Because I think you nailed it. It's like at this point in the movie, he's become a greater warrior yeah. even than his father. And because then, he has also realized that the flesh is stronger than the sword. There you go. There you go. And uh, the mind also, because he figured out all these traps. And then he goes for it. So after he's killed the army, then he goes for the final confrontation with Thulsa Doom. Well, uh, during that fight with um, his second in command, he's also visited, uh, which yep. I forgot about. And I thought <laughs> she... She's she's in Valhalla. This is why she's yeah. dressed the way she is. Yeah, like yeah. a Valkyrie. Like, like a Valkyrie. She yeah. shows up because she's a all sparkly, silver. A sparkly Valkyrie. A very yeah. sparkly Valkyrie. <laughs> it caught me way off well, guard. She blinds the dude. She's so right. like, uh, yeah. yeah. And because I think that was the moment. Like that dude had the drop on Conan. Yeah. And she, and she intervenes yeah, she, from heaven yes. or, or from uh, Valhalla. Yeah. <laughs> to, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Craziness. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was surprised. And then uh, the final showdown with Thulsa Doom as he's, uh, you know, on top of the mountain talking to Is it a showdown, his... though? Yeah, I feel like uh, it... we got our main showdown here, and this is uh, not a big it showdown. It was pretty anticlimactic. I liked it. It wasn't, there wasn't a fight. No, the, well, yeah, because the, the, the princess leads him back uh, in there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. She, she's now on Team Conan because mm-hmm. Conan's crew saves her from another snake arrow. Yes. Um, and then he basically just sneaks up on Thulsa Doom while he's giving one of his, while he's speechifying. And, uh, and, and, Thulsa- he, and he gives the I am your father speech. Yeah. <laughs> it's James Earl Jones giving an I am your father speech. I did not put that together <laughs> just now. Yeah. Because he's basically like, what would you be without me? And like, you're my son. I have given you purpose in the world and all this other stuff. And Conan for a minute looks like he's maybe going to get taken in by it. But no, then he chops his fucking head off. Yeah. 
Uh, he gets him in the neck. Like, yeah. And every like, and then, chop like, is brutal like, as bloody. Like, like, yeah, it's chops. brutal. Yeah. Like multiple times. And the, yeah, the sound. It's like he's hitting bone in that <laughs> neck. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's not a clean like violent. one and the head comes yeah. off. It's no. like chop, chop, chop. And then he throws the head down the stairs. Yeah, well, it's a brutal movie. It is. Well, it is. And that's why I was saying like beforehand, like when his mother is killed, uh, when I said it felt more beautiful. I mean, as comparison to the, the actual barbarian deaths, like the way his mother was killed earlier yeah, because it just shows slow motion him. Yeah, slow the, motion yeah, the, the, her, him, the him shot, holding her hand the, the shot where it's off. just him it's just on him holding her hand and then off camera you see like the shadow of like this you hear the swipe and yes. then you see the head fall like and in the edge of the frame like, i like that that was pretty cool i was even i was like that was pretty awesome yeah, yeah. yeah. but I comparatively like i mean balls of doom gets his head axed yeah. off yeah. because you don't yeah. want to see hers chopped off no his you yeah. want to you want to feel yeah. it because yeah. he caused so much pain earned it. yeah yeah yes um is conan going to become like the next ruler or whatever i think it is unknown well he throws the sword down i think that's symbolic in some way of like you know, it's his father's sword yeah too, his right? his mm-hmm. mission at that point like is yeah. done they burn yeah. the whole place down well yeah too, he's yeah. like I mean, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to. That's a cult. He doesn't want to rule them. Yeah, because yeah, the princess is like bowing to him. Yeah, and then he and like he, holds his hand out to come yeah, with him. It's like, no, we're equals. You can yeah. come with yeah, me. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't have to do that anymore. And we're gonna go back to your father, apparently, and maybe they, you know, have adventures. Who knows? But uh, all we know is that a we title get, screen yeah, we get a, comes up at we the get, end. Conan sitting on his throne, all bearded and everything. I'm like, ooh, mm-hmm. that looks like that's looked, a cool look. He looked to very Arnie. Viking in that yeah. in that frame. Yeah. But we, but we get you know the titles at the end. It's like he returned the daughter. He got into many wars and adventures, and he became a king by his own hand. Which is a story that will be told. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. That that is also how Conan the Destroyer ends. With it, that is exact it? same thing. <laughs> exact same. Really? Exact same. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I think. Uh, they have a better line. Uh, what was it? It was like, but that story, yeah, it's not shall also be told. It's like, to but that told. is another ad- adventure for another time or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's the same shot. Yeah. Jerks. And they all start with the uh, before in the time before, you know, and after the oceans drank Atlantis and, you know, mm-hmm. there was a time undreamed of and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that brings us to the end of Conan the Barbarian because uh, unfortunately King Conan never materialized, but it could. No. Uh, yeah. Always potential. So um, we're going to go around the room, tell you what we individually thought of this movie. But before we do that, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I got nothing. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing. Nothing about snakes. He's got. No. He looks like a snake. He turned into a snake. I, don't know. I feel we've yeah. already gone to He's that. He's wearing well. a cod piece or something. He's got. Wow, you went to cod piece. Head, That's you know on you. I mean, it's Igor. Okay. That means so, he has I mean, genitals he's... though, and I don't want to think oh. about that. No, he doesn't. He no, he just he wants. Yeah. Has he been working out? He All right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we want to remind people how they can get a hold of us. Uh, you can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can get a hold of us by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh, here Walton, we go. Uh, wants us to know that uh, William Smith, uh, Conan's dad, mm-hmm. is on the Wall of Fame because he was in Conan the Barbarian. He was in Hell Comes to Frogtown, uh-huh, mm-hmm. uh-huh. reunited with Sandal Bergman, mm-hmm. and he was also in Maniac Cop, which we also uh-huh. did. On this that's show. a good assortment of things. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. That's variety. William Smith's been in 300 movies. Shit. Wow. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. Shit. Yeah. He's been around. He, he was a child actor in The Ghost of Frankenstein. He was in uh, Action USA, Sean, that Vinegar Syndrome title. What was he in that? <laughs> He was the, remember on the bridge at the end, he was yeah. like the, I can't remember if it was a cop or an FBI guy. That, yeah, it's William Smith. He's all over the fucking place. Okay. Did he have the sunglasses and the stash? Yes, yes, okay, yes, I remember yeah, him. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyway, about uh, tonight's movie, Conan the Barbarian, Nelson Nascimento writes in and says, Conan, what is best in life? To listen to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, <laughs> li- see them become the most listened to show in the universe, and hear the lamentation of other podcasters. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I wanted to use that earlier, but uh, he says uh, this is the bar by which all sword and sorcery films are measured, and Arnold in his prime. Looking forward to hearing everyone discuss this one. 
uh, Owen Johnson says this movie growing up had parallel lines that were similar to Navajo stories. People shape shifting into animals, spirits that come from a different plane of existence, giant snakes that people worship, James Earl Jones using the snake as an arrow. But I think what made this movie hit home was the landscape here on the Navajo nation. We have a similar land formations that look like the locations they shot at in this movie. And he gives it a 10 out of 10. Well, we oh, just, nice. we That's determined it was, awesome. um, uh, Spain. Okay. And the second one, I think, was shot in Mexico, but that's where you're going for that kind of. That's cool, though. Like that's I love, really cool. I I like hearing how people personally relate to movies in yeah, ways that I yeah. might not. Yeah. So that that's was, awesome. That was um also the basis for the Beastmaster book, wasn't it? It was a Navajo yeah. story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I would love to see like a fantasy that's totally based in like Native American folklore, and <laughs> that would be cool. That would be so great. I'm sure like I. It's gotta be yeah, I'm sure there, there is, gotta but be. like I've never seen one, and there should be a big one because mm-hmm. I can't think of anything. Right, and that would just be so awesome. Be like really fantastical. And yeah, stuff, yeah, I would love that. Uh, Grant Paris says a couple times a year I buy a French bread loaf, a block of cheese, and some miscellaneous <laughs> fruits and summer sausage. And then I put on Conan the Barbarian and eat with my <laughs> hands. It feels very primal. <laughs> I like that that's, tradition. That's, that's, that's awesome. I like that, where you can eat with a movie. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You gotta get pea soup, dude. You gotta oh, add that to the rotation. Don't ruin it. No, yeah. meat like and cheese we, and bread and I like wine. We started out with like a nice cheese board and then it turned into <laughs> right. that. We're just doing like, charcuterie oh, okay. with, with Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as you drink wine out of a vase, then you'll be fine. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. So. Like, that's my party. Like, invite me. <laughs> with your, I wanna yeah, come to that party. So I guess you put them on I love charcuterie. Yeah. Kryptonian Orphan said, did any of you guys and gals think that Sandal Bergman looked like Rod Stewart, or was that just me? Oh, <laughs> wow! I did. I didn't think it, but I see it. Damn, you're ruining <laughs> out Sandal Bergman for me. Don't do that. Uh, oh, he man. says anyway. Great selection, Colin. I love this movie. Where else can you have Arnold, James Earl Jones, and Max von Sydow? Count Conan the fucking barbarian. That's where. And uh, Brad Butcher. Brad Butcher says, uh, do you know the Riddle of Steel? He says, I love that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, About Cool as Ice, that was last week's movie that we did. Uh, Carson Snar said, you're very brave people to sit through this movie. Thank you. You're right. We We are. We we deserve medals. (laughs) Uh, Simon Carter says, we all know Vanilla Ice's crowning achievement was the ninja rap in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Goddamn right. It is it, yeah, it's pretty timeless. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says the best takeaway take I had from this episode was remembering how Matthew Broderick tainted the memory of Inspector Gadget and knowing that others <laughs> hate him for it. Yes. There was Absolutely. a lot of gadget yeah. talk on gadget that. Talk. Absolutely. Yeah, French Stewart got brought up. It was a wild ride. Uh, Michael Whitaker <laughs> wants us to know that, uh, or he says it's guaranteed that the mechanics place in Cool as Ice was someone's personal art project that the location scouts just found. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Pat Hetfield says, I have never, ever been interested in seeing this movie, and I'm still not, but your discussion on it was lively and entertaining. (laughs) Considering the subject matter, this is nothing short of miraculous. Then again, I should know by now not to expect anything less from the internet superstars. I especially found the part where you were discussing your head canon concerning the movie to be interesting. So keep it up. Sometimes a movie <laughs> forces you to make sense of it. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. a movie forces you to be like, no, you figure this out. Yeah. Like, we, we we're came, not doing it. <laughs> you came up with one for uh, Cool as Ice. You got to yeah. go back and listen to that yeah. episode yeah, to find to out. That's, uh, I find that comment insanely flattering. <laughs> that, that, that's a yeah. great yeah. comment. I'm Thank like, you. you know what? I don't blame anyone who doesn't want to watch no, a movie. I, yeah. if, if you tell me you don't want to watch it, I'm not going to be mad. I'm yeah. like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I think it'll be only more interesting if you just hear our version of it and then have that live in your head. Uh, far more entertaining, yeah. I think. Well, Brent Zemecki says the ending of Cool as I should have dropped the zero and got with the hero and ended with the ninja rap scene from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. That would have been I a mean, great way to connect those movies yeah. for synergy. Right, my next gig in Turtle Show. And he goes, yeah. oh, not again. And then it cuts to black. Yeah. That's the end of that movie. Genius. Ugh. That would be fantastic. See, we could be Vanilla Ice's agent too. Yeah. Ice. We, yeah. You know? I got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. And then it's and then it's and then you get a title card, catch vanilla ice in Teenage Mutant Ninja yes. Turtles 2, Sacred of the Ooze, and Wait, then boom. Did that you come first? They were the same year. Oh, they were saying okay, okay. Damn business. Yeah. Come on. What are you doing? You're leaving money on the table. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the previous week we watched a movie called I Madman. Steve Carney says, "I'm thankful for Tubi when it comes to movies like I Madman. I'll take watching the movie, or I'll take watching the movie for free over paying eighty four dollars for the out of print Blu Ray yeah. on Amazon. Well, it's a good movie. <laughs> I have never seen it before. It's not worth owning for eighty four dollars. No, 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 no. But he says I simply love Tybor Takish's other film, The Gate, and even The Gate Two. So more, they're fantastic gateway horror." 
pun intended. <laughs> oh, nice. well, I yep. love that. Nice. Uh, Ed Snyder, we were saying uh, we didn't know what happened to Jenny Wright after okay. uh, you know her success in the in the nineties. Uh, Ed Snyder says that Jenny Wright is on the convention circuit. Oh, is she? Oh, All right, nice. I'll keep an eye out for her. Okay. Uh, about uh, the previous week's episode, which was the Beastmaster, uh, Joshua eight seven six says one of the best. Oh, he says uh, Saturday Night Free Show is one of the best movie shows out there. Oh. I just listened to the Beastmaster episode, one of my favorite movies from my childhood. Mark Singer was amazing, and what a hunk! Highly recommended the highly recommend the TV show. It ran for four seasons and was surprisingly well acted and very good. And the actor playing Dar is excellent, and still working today on Days of Our Lives. Makes sense. All right, Days of uh, that tracks. Yeah. B. Shaw Foolery says, I listened to that episode again last night, and I think Rip Torn's character and it is just the most unlikely role I've ever thought he'd be in. It's like seeing <laughs> Pee Wee Herman as a sarcastic vam- biker vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I love him and Buffy. Love it. He's great. <laughs> We've never done that on this show, have we? Buffy the Vampire I've thought Slayer? about it, but oh, I didn't know how you'd feel about it, Callan. <laughs> I mean, it's got vampires. I mean, uh, it sounds, uh, so but it's also a '90s movie, which you don't. Uh, like. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it's like PG. <laughs> was it? it? Well, it's P- PG thirteen. It's it's so as cool as ice. Basically, like if <laughs> and did you like cool as ice? No. That's kind of the, yeah, that's always point. Yeah, <laughs> Buffy's like for teen girls, but with vampires. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's vampire and Rutger Hauer. Uh, yeah. So. Shoot 'em up was a movie we watched several weeks ago, mm-hmm. probably prior to Beastmaster. I'm yes. not entirely sure now. Yes, it was. Uh, yes. Peter Gatt said uh, he believes that Clive Owen's best film, which we didn't mention, was Croupier. Oh, I forgot about that one. I haven't seen it for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Well, thank you all for writing, and we really honestly appreciate yeah. it. That was a very full mailbag. Yeah, thank I you. I love yes. it. It was. It's my, it's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> There's an emoji. How nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we got an emoji. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of Conan the Barbarian, starting with Michaela. We'll go in order tonight, since it's all messed up and different. I was just saying when you were like, before we started recording, I was like, God damn it, if I sit in this chair, I'm going to have to go first. And then Holly was like, well, maybe John. And no. No. No, <laughs> Michaela, you will go first. Again, I'm trying to get, like, the people who want to, like, get it out, I feel like you need to get it out. Well, so. and I was saying uh, this is my least favorite spot to sit. I went on a whole thing about this spot while you were upstairs. I, <laughs> I, I, I should have been a gentleman and traded but i like the seat no i <laughs> I, I, I you I know like what, holly i would have done the same i would have been like yeah i agree and Bye. that's it yeah i would have I done the same i don't begrudge you for that okay. um so i used to play the conan exiles playstation 4 game which is Whoa. really fun it's a. Uh, oh, i remember that it's an rpg game the downside to it is it's a very easy game to beat very quickly that was that was the reason the only reason i stopped playing it is because it beat it really quickly but you start off that game being crucified in the desert and then conan comes and cuts you down and saves your life and then and all the religions are in it and you get to pick which religion you want and there's giant snakes and lions and all sorts it's a really fun Sounds fun game yeah and it's violent and but and then when the sandstorms come around you have to go hide because they'll kill you if you're out in it it's like it's really good they just need to make it like more have more play time than like 10 hours like it just yeah you, you go through it and you're like what do i do now but um kind of like so, him in this movie so yeah like, kind of oh, what do i do now uh yeah but this movie moves slower than that game does so <laughs> um so i'll definitely check that out and definitely play it um yeah i'd seen this before i'd seen the remake i it's like the production value is insane and the way it holds up is kind of insane too especially when you consider your people turning into snakes that could look really really bad but it pretty entertaining the way they handle it i think you definitely gotta see it just because it's like it's an eat your vegetable situation right like even if it is a little slow i do think you can trim a lot of this movie i think two hours and nine minutes is i don't feel like there's two hours and nine minutes of content in this movie you know there's a lot of scenes with just like that like kind of sweeping score and like landscapes and stuff which like done in moderation and and with like a good flow doesn't always feel slow like the lord of the rings movies have those too you know but i feel like they move at a better clip um but i think you kind of like have to see it for like movie education you know what i'm saying like i think it has that important of a role with this subgenre that it's your cinephile job to watch it so i would definitely recommend it i love that it's violent i love that it commits to a hard r i like those things about it because mm. like the other side of that spectrum is the Beastmaster, like kind of childish like which they both have their place and you know we don't have blood but we have that yeah exactly <laughs> so it's kind of like you know what flavor do i want today right um and so yeah i definitely think you should watch it i think that 
There's times you could get up and go get your laundry out of the washer and then bring it back to fold it and not miss anything. But mm. definitely watch it. Holly. Yeah, I think I'm I'm on the same page as you. Um it's it's a really well done movie. Like it's I I don't know if people automatically think that Conan the Barbarian is a good movie. Like they just have a I don't know, I don't want to say that like a prejudice about like a the kind of movie it is, but maybe it, that's what it is. I don't know. Um, but it's actually like a good movie. Like it's it's pretty decent. The 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 production value is amazing. And like we were saying, the dialogue is surprisingly good, even though there's not a ton of talking. Like when they do talk, a lot of times it's it's not cheesy. It's 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 a it's a good dialogue. Um, yeah, I like this movie a lot. It's. My biggest complaint, we've already talked about, it's very long and it feels long. There's a lot that could be trimmed from it. There's a lot of times that I feel like, I feel like as long as the scenes are taking, it's not pushing the story forward. So I'm not sure why we're spending so much time on it. Um, But I mean, really, that's my complaint about that is just like, that's the rewatchability. Like, it's not one that I'd want to go back and revisit because of that, you know, because I don't want to sit through... A movie that doesn't move at a quick clip. Right. You for, uh, Like for a lot of these, or all yeah. I think we'll agree, you got to be in the mood for it. Yeah, you got to know that you're sure. going to be in there for two. I think tonight yeah. I was ready for two hours of this. Two and which a is, half. Wasn't well, it two and a half? Oh, no, no, two hours. Two? Two, two, hours. Like two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my biggest complaint is, is how long it is. Um, otherwise, I, I think it's a great movie. I, I do appreciate that they go for it with the violence because fucking Conan the Barbarian should be a violent yeah, movie. Yeah, it's a barbarian in yeah. the title. Yeah. Yeah, it should go for it and it does and it didn't disappoint and it holds up ex- extraordinarily well. Um, yeah, I dig this movie. I feel like, I'm not sure why you haven't seen it if you haven't seen it. You know, like, it's been a while since I'd seen it but I've seen it several times so I feel like if you haven't you should probably check it out and yeah. Yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about it other than length yeah it's a solid solid watch That's i wasn't really mm-hmm. i wasn't really um i don't know too much length for you yeah too much length for me Sean. <laughs> yeah it's okay mm-hmm. <laughs> my turn oh yeah because <laughs> I, 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 I there was no <laughs> you didn't pass it yeah there was no pass oh i know uh, because i was very distracted by your comments so. by, by the length <laughs> happens um, I mean, this is kind of the, it is the standard of, of these type of movies. Um, do this, did this play on TV nowadays? I think that's, that's why we don't, it played on TV like tons back when yeah. we were younger and all that stuff. Yeah. And I think that's why it's more, I feel like it it's did. more known to I all of us. I feel like it did when the remake came out. I've seen Probably. the remake on yeah. TV a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's yeah. Been, this one's been supplanted by the remake. Yeah. So I think I, that's why it's like, I, I don't know that Conan is... Right, like, and I think yeah. that's why we're losing it. And probably, again, I don't know the specifics of, of it or how many people still recognize like Conan the Barbarian. Um, but I still think it's the standard of this type of movie. Um, I think... It's I still it's a very good movie. Again, the score did a lot for me. Yeah, um, it does a lot. It does. Uh, like we said, the score does a lot of heavy lifting, but it's it's just a it's a nice to listen to. I think it accents the movie very well. Um, it did a lot for me in this movie because I, I do agree like you. Um, you got to be ready for this movie. You got to know you're going in for a two hour sort of epic. Um, and it worked for me tonight. Um, it, this is not my normal type of movie. I won't go back and watch these type of movies often. I do enjoy them when I do get to watch them. Um, this is one of the best, um, I had fun. Um, I mean, the characters are good. I mean, yeah, it's like Michaela said for, you know, eat your vegetables. Like, even if you don't like this sort of thing, you got to watch it. It's Conan the Barbarian. It is, it is it like that. It's for a lot of people. I don't think it has been supplanted. Uh, this is a standard. I recommend it. Uh, very good movie. Colin. I almost called you Conan. <laughs> Conan. <laughs> Conan. Hey, but that's all right. Please wrap up. Yeah, I was going to say. That's honestly come true. Conan, your wrap up. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I always held this as the standard bearer for sword and sorcery movies or fantasy movies. I think, uh, you know, until obviously Lord of the Rings came out. Right, but uh, this is a out. different kind it's of different, fantasy yeah. than that. Yeah. Right, because I think this is still the standard bearer for Isn't sword and this sorcery. technically sword and sandal and like Lord of the Rings would be sword and sorcery? That's no, they, they say that sword and sandal is like your, um, yeah, that's your Lord historical kind of, yeah. And like the Hercules movies... Uh, 
uh, from the 60s. You mm. know how many of those? But are that's worthy? not historical. I know, but there's less sorcery, I guess. They're, they're, they're In mythology? About, because they're talking this- about like a blend of horror, I guess, which is, I think, what sets sword and sorcery apart from sword and sandal. Because you could, like, Clash of the Titans, mm-hmm. technically, I guess, is sword and sandal. Yeah, even though that's there's, what I'm you know, there's magic in mythology, uh, uh, gods and, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. But when you're talking about like evil wizards and, you know, uh, and you kind of get into that, I guess. Yeah, it's like a, it's for a, me, I would divide them by environment. Like if it's a deserty fucking thing, then it's sword and sandal. If it's like if it's like obviously supposed to be an analog for Europe, then it's sword and sorcery. Oh, yeah. And then you That's my that definition. You have like uh, the the trolls and the orcs and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And you get into like J.R. I mean, mm-hmm. J.R. Tolkien obviously defined a genre. Mm-hmm. of um uh, you know i i think you're saying it's high fantasy right or it's like high mm-hmm. fantasy means there's uh, right. lots of fantastical stuff everywhere mm-hmm. this is um like uh more to me it reads as like almost hit like an alternate history yeah. where it's supposed to be like a you know like pre-recorded history when magic still existed right like our ancestors could have come from this right not from lord of the rings like you could see right. how we could come from that yeah yeah as magic dies out it also right. seems like the end of his like race or something right, right? yeah he's the last of the people old. that are gonna yeah. turn into snakes yeah um i don't know this is uh Maybe one of my his wife in the pit That's why so <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh this has always been i think one of my favorite movies like of all time um and that's why you know i i, I went so hard on it in this one you know just researching a bunch of stuff and finding out you know about uh, robert e howard i had known that he um a lot of the this is an interesting thing like uh, a lot of the Conan stories were written for a uh, weird tales magazine, mm-hmm. um, which was also, you know, HP Lovecraft was a contributor to that. And so they, there became, is the connection. Wasn't he part of the Lovecraft club or something like yeah, that? They yeah. all, all these authors became like letter writing pals yeah. and they would influence each other's, um, fiction. And so Conan actually takes place now. I think it's accepted within, uh, the H.P. Lovecraft universe and the God of Set, I think uh, the Snake God mm-hmm. is uh, they. It's like that's Lovecraft's uh, the Yig, you know, the Great Serpent. So, and a lot of the, especially when you watch Conan the Destroyer, there's a, a you know the the ancient deity that they're bringing back to life, and that feels very Lovecraftian. So there's a shared thing there. Um, uh, I haven't actually gone back and read any of those those stories myself i recognize that this is a, a an adaptation as seen through john milius yes who i think is uh you know based on the dialogue in this and having watched the other you know conan movie like right <laughs> before this is like wow you see the difference uh, yeah, yeah you see a difference like he's a more uh it feels like he's a more intelligent screenwriter more loquacious. He's, he's able to work in um he works in his allegories like all the way through it. Like, I mean, the, the movie starts with a uh, forge and the whole thing is about the forging of a man. Basically. It's like right there from the opening mm. scene, he's doing it. Uh, you know, you're watching this uh, kid walk in circles through his, you know, the school age. Right. And it's like, when you feel that, and then uh, basically it's this uh, liberation from the parents, finding your own way in the world, uh, finding love, uh, and eventually, I think by the end of it, you know, he both breaks his fa- symbolic father's sword and defeats the uh, the the his the evil teacher, right? Who's kind of inviting him to go like, well, you can go this way or that way, and he becomes his own full man at the end of the movie. Which I guess that's what the problem with the sequels is like. Right well, now, you don't have that. Now you're just sending him off on adventures. But there's tons of books and stuff of Conan going off and getting in adventures because. But this is like. The origin story bio, biopic yeah. of Conan the Barbarian. Um, the score, we've said it over and over again, but I mean, I, I really do think this is one of the greatest movie scores I have ever heard um, because and it does carry so much of the movie. But I mean, it is just this like operatic level of uh, this is what the other fantasy films don't really have. Not and, like this, yeah. Yeah, and I think it does kind of elevate, you know, everything that you're watching. Um, but yeah, it's a serious, uh, you know, uh, exploration of that subject. And I don't know, somehow, like, I like my fantasy with, like, little fantasy in it. Maybe that's, like, a, a thing that I have going on. It's like, I don't buy 100% into when you go, like, you know, that's why I like Game of Thrones, you know? It's like, it's yeah. 
It, uh, so that's low fantasy, right? right? It's like mostly people. No, and then that's a high fantasy. Shadow demon yeah, but the, the first, the whole first season feels like this is, uh, you know, like the War of the Roses or something. I mean, it feels like a historical thing between those feuding houses mm-hmm. and you know all this right. soldiers. And and, White Walkers. Yeah, there's that's <laughs> yeah, not really the, the op- that's the opening and scene of the series. Them eventually, well, that's what's intriguing about it. But yeah, <laughs> so it's um. But I guess that's how I kind of, you know, it, it, uh, Game of Thrones lures you into it. It's like, we're going to give you this, like, real, real thing with with drama. And then eventually there's going to be dragons. But by the time we give you the dragons, you will be, have bought in so much that, you know, uh, that you're totally going to buy it. So, um, anyway, I would definitely recommend, uh, Conan the Barbarian. Uh, I, I, like I said, you know, you talk to people who, who don't say that it's the, the, you know, um, like that's the the sword and the sorcery movie. Uh, that's why I think we, you know, it's like I wanted to bring it tonight and like you know just check it out again and see how it uh, how it played. So uh, that's Conan the Barbarian next week. Uh, wait, so was, that was a four. Four approved. Was, uh, yeah. All right, so that's free yeah. show approved. All right, there you you go. have to watch it now. Yep. Um. So next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by John. What are we watching next week? Um. We are going to return to the peak of sci-fi filmmaking. Yes, the year nineteen ninety five. Okay. And we will be watching Species. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> species. All right. So well, that, that was the other thing I wanted to get back to when we were talking about how do we pronounce it? How do you pronounce species? Species. species. Or species. Oh, Some people do species. Yeah. species. That's how I say it. Yeah, species. Yeah. yeah. Species. Yeah. There we All go. Right. We got the difference. So we're going to be going back and forth on pronunciation. Yep. You need a pronunciation key for next week's episode. Species. Species. <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.